Welcome. We are live from the Metaphor Club on this Sunday afternoon to speak with the award-winning director, Ken Whittingham. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. How are you today? I'm doing good. Glad to be here. Right on. So we're just going to jump right into it. Now you have a very impressive resume. I pulled it up on IMDb because I was just like, oh my goodness. Like you've been part of some of every television show that I love. Mm -hmm. 30 Rock, The Gilmore Girls, like you've had a hand in everything. Um, talk to us a little bit about, first of all, what exactly what is the job of the director? What, what, what is your function? Well, the job of the director is to receive a, a script and internalize the script, figure out what it's, you know, what it, the script is about, what the story is about, and then put the visual aspect to the, to the, to the script. And then there, uh, and then direct the actors and make it really just make the whole thing come alive. And you, so you're telling the actors what to do, how to do it. You're putting, you're telling, you're talking to the director of photography on where you want the cameras to be. Um, you are talking to all the different departments, sound and not sound and props, and so you're really at the helm of the ship. Uh, um, and, and you just are really responsible for the end product of the show, the look of the show, the feel of the show, the tone of the show. Um, and that's like, a, for you particularly, since you've done episodic television, right? So that's like on an episode by episode basis, each time they come to you with a script and, you know, so if it's blackish and it's the episode of when they had the baby or whatever, like you set the tone, you set that up, you give us the looks, you give us the you know, you guide them through the entire process to make that story correct reflect to us. Correct, correct, and hopefully it's done well and 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 done in a in a way in which the writer and the producer saw it in their heads. So was that always your goal? Like, did you come into the gate saying I want to be a director, or did you start out doing something else? How did you get involved? Actually, um, I started off doing what you do. Actually, I have a degree in journalism. And I and I was in college and and um, graduated uh, with a bachelor's in, in journalism and then started working at CBS News and decided then that that's not really what I wanted to do. I wasn't really happy in the news business. But prior to being in the newsroom, I uh, worked when I was in college. I worked as a page and, uh, and on these different comedies. Um, uh, and so I felt I didn't I didn't realize it then, but I felt more comfortable in that environment in the comedy world because I'm kind of a clown at heart. So I did, I just I I didn't realize it then, but I felt more comfortable in that in that in that area. So uh, I worked in news a couple of years at CBS News and decided that it wasn't for me, and I decided to leave to just to walk away. So I walked away and traveled for a while. And then a friend of mine called me out of the blue when I got back uh, from traveling and said, would you be interested in being a production assistant on the show 227? And so, uh, and so I said, sure, because I didn't have a job and, and I didn't really know what I, was, what I wanted to do. So I got on the show 227 and, um, as a PA and um, kind of found my way there. Initially, I thought I wanted to write because I had a writing background. Uh, I actually, I pitched about six ideas to them. They bought one of them, and and then uh, I just decided, yeah, I think I want to direct. And so I started uh, setting my goals towards directing, and um, you know, taking classes and and being on the set and trying to really absorb uh, and figure out what the director's job was and what the role was. Uh, so that's that's how I kind of got into directing. 227, now that is a throwback. How many people here are old enough to remember 227? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's a throwback. So that's like, you, you've you been in the game for a long time. A like long that's, time. that's very, I, I, that is impressive. Yeah. And so to piggybacking on that is that you started out on 227, right? And we've come all the way forward to Blackish. That's longevity. Mm -hmm. How have you made longevity? How have you maintained longevity? In the game, I think my my I I, I, I maintain longevity because I was true to comedy, and it really doesn't matter if it's um, what kind of comedy it is. You have to be a student of, of comedy and student student of the game. So I just uh, I just I mean a part a part of it is being blessed. A part of it is hard work. 
a part of it is just changing with the times and, and evolving with comedy because comedy has obviously evolved since the 70s. There's different type of comedies, different, so many different uh, styles of comedy. So I just maintained up being a student to the game and luckily I still get hired because all you can do is hope, all you can hope for is that people are feeling what you do and, and feeling what you put out there. You never know, you know, some people might go, oh, that show is bad or oh, I hated the way that that was directed. Um, but all you can do is what you do. And luckily, um, people are feeling it, you know, and people, I keep getting hired. So, you know. <laughs> 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 and so in that, and you mentioned this uh, a little bit, is that um, that the, the landscape has changed. The way that we as black people are presented on television, whether it's comedy or drama, mm -hmm. has also changed. Correct. Right? Um, where, you know, so a joke that maybe we wouldn't make 30 years ago, right, mm -hmm. when 227 was on the air, right. people would look down on. Now, right. blackish kind of like puts it all out there, right? right. Which blackish, if you haven't watched it, it is hilarious. And so, talk a little bit about that because how does that work? Like, you know, you've seen it change. You and the, the things that we put out there, the images that we put out there. How how does that weigh on you? How important is that to you? Well, that's a very good question because um, when I started on two two seven, um, it was starting to change. There, you had Marla, who Marla Gibbs, who who back then had a had a, um, a building right around the corner from here. Yeah, Marla. Yeah, <laughs> and it opened one of the first black theaters uh, in this area. So Marla was very uh, pro proactive in making sure that um, that uh, black voices were heard on 227 as opposed to the Jeffersons when they're basically all white writers and maybe one black writer. So Marla uh, hired, uh, as a matter of fact I was out with a couple of writers the other night, Fred Johnson and, and Bootsy uh, uh, Parker. Um, so um, she, she employed black writers to have that voice, but still the executive producer, and a friend of mine, Bill Bowler, was executive producer, but still there were these white writers and, and they just had these images and they were kind of regurgitating old scripts from one day to, you know, shows back in the 50s or whatever. I don't know, uh, Fathers know, Father Knows Best or shows like that. So they weren't, um, so they were, they weren't, didn't really, I don't think really cared about our, our culture. So Marla was very instrumental in, in worrying about our culture, things we would say, how we looked um, on, because if you think about it, 227, there were, you know, Lester was a construction worker and Marla was a stay at home uh, wife, but they dressed like they were millionaires, you know, they would sit out on the porch <laughs> and, uh, and Jack Kay, and they were, they were all, they look good, you know, yes. they look good. And, um, but, um, but those writers that, that came out of, because back then there were really, there were three networks. Right. There was NBC, CBS, and ABC. And so there were very few black shows on television. There was Amen, there was um, uh, 227, Different World, and Cosby. So it was, it was starting to be a change in the way the culture was, was perceived. And so out of 227 came writers like Sarah Finney, um, uh, Vita, Vita Spears, um, different people who w later went on to create their own shows and, ha and were very responsible about the image and the look of, of, uh, of black people. Uh, Sarah Finney created uh, Moesha and, um, and the Parkers and shows like that. So you, it started to change then, the, the, the image and the look. So I've seen the progression all the way through and the more African American writers and, and the really minority writers that we get into the room, the culture is going to change, and it's going to be re it's going to be a little bit more real, and it's going to be more topical, and it's going to it's just going to strike a chord, I think, with with, uh, with the American public because it's it's authentic and it's not it's not just fabricated lives. Yeah. So what about the difference between working on say a Thirty Rock, right? Mm -hmm. Which I love 30 Rock, I think the show is hilarious, mm -hmm. but I also realize that 30 Rock makes some references like to us black people and things and women and that are kind of questionable, right? Mm -hmm. Like Tina Fey's brand of comedy is a little bit different than say, you know, what's happening on Blackish. Can mm -hmm. you talk about the differences between working with those two different kind of crews? Well, working with them, um, with, you know, someone like Tina Fey and their style of writing and and their comedy, it's it's a very um, it is a little different. It's very 
joke heavy and 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 it's very um it's in i want to say a little mean spirited um and and it's not as responsible uh they don't really care about images Mm -hmm. um they because everybody's a little bit of a nut you know everybody has an issue everybody has a quirk everybody has you know and it's a and like for 30 rock for instance it's all these different people these you know these these writers and it's behind the scenes of a show mm -hmm. uh, so it's these writers it's talent it's dealing with the talent dealing with the head writers dealing with all these people so everybody's a little a little off everybody's just a little quirky and so that's where that comedy really comes from from everybody's um, um, I guess weirdness of the show so you can kind of have fun with it because um, you, you don't there are no parameters you don't really worry about image because nobody cares about image of these of these people who are working in this workspace. Mm -hmm.